Hello everyone and welcome to a Magic the Gathering video! Woo! If you're only here for the giveaway, uh, that's completely fine, I can make you watch the video. You can just skip to the end where I will explain how to enter and how to uh, what you're gonna get maybe if you enter the giveaway. But if you're somewhat interested in Magic the Gathering, uh, thank you for watching the video and stick with me as I explain this deck that I've built on paper. It's uh, right, right in front of me in this little box actually, I'm just gonna... I'm gonna pull a, a, a just gonna show you uh, the cards as I explain what they do uh, if I can find them in my 60 card deck list. This is a black and red lizards deck that is a very aggressive strategy that unlike all the aggro decks of this format, I'm thinking more red for instance, um, it's not as good as closing games. Of course it can do it uh, really quickly but not like turn four quick most of the time, but it also has a lot more resilience and is more capable of, of, of like pivoting to a mid-range strategy thanks to very specific cards. So uh, if we go through the deck list card by card, we got Cut Down, which is a pretty good removal against uh, very aggressive strategies. We got two uh, two drops in the form of Iridescent Vine Lasher, which uh, can become a, a sort of threat in the in the early, but also in the mid to too late you don't really want to go too late with this kind of deck but to the mid game uh, because it, it does damage to your opponent every time you play a land and you can pay an additional uh, offspring cost of two to create a token that has the exact same effect so if you happen to draw it in the mid game it's not a complete waste of a one draw because you can just pay three and have twice the creature and potentially do twice the damage same goes with Hired Claw, you know, it's just a 1 mana, 1-2 one, creature that makes uh, your opponent take 1 damage every time you attack with a lizard, doesn't have to be the Hired Claw, it can be any, any lizard, and it can also uh, boost itself once per turn, which makes it a bit more valuable as the game progresses. As far as the 2 drops are concerned, we're gonna start with the staples of a Deep Back Cavern, which is just a really good card in general, if you're playing black, you're probably splashing this into all of your decks, this card is um, pretty busted. <laughs> It's basically just confiscation, right? But uh, on a body that has flying and lifelink and can be removed, giving your opponent back the card that you took from them. Uh, but then they had to waste some removal to to take care of it. Go for the throat is one such removal. That's potentially one of the the best uh, removal cards of format, or maybe just the best, most flexible one, because there are not that many artifact creatures in the, in the current meta game. Of course, there's a couple of like mono black uh, lists playing the. Um, Phyrexian Flesh Gorger, I think is the name, that, that's an artifact. You might want to consider something else for this card specifically. Uh, but other than that, it's a pretty good card. Flame Cash Gecko is uh, a pretty amazing card that if you're not lost life this turn, which is easily achieved thanks to your 1 drops, uh, just allows you to basically reimburse its cost. And with the additional 2 mana that you get, uh, you can play a Deep Bad Cavern, or you can play a Go for the Throat, or you can play a Fireglass Mantle, which uh, at the beginning of your second main phase allows you to uh, exile the top card of your deck, choose one that you can play this turn, which basically means that you're sort of drawing two every turn, right? That's basically what this means. It means that as long as you're on the offensive, you get to draw additional cards pretty much every turn, and that's pretty cool. And then we have the first of our legendary lizards, Gave Scale Court, which um, makes it so every time you play a lizard spell, you deal one damage to your opponent, which quickly racks up, and any time a creature would enter the battlefield, uh, if your opponent took damage this turn, it enters with an additional plus one plus one counter, which makes it tougher to deal with. I have, uh, here's, here's one of my copies of Kev. This good little lizard boy. Really cool card. Uh, it does uh, die to stuff like cut down and, and go for the throat and shock, but uh, because it has ward two, you're also dealing two damage to your opponent, as uh, they're casting a spell to remove this. And then for the three drops, we're only playing Thought Stalker Warlock, which is another discard card. It basically, all it reads is uh, you get to look at your opponent's hand and they discard a card like 90% of the time because you would have dealt damage to them earlier. Also, it has Menace, uh, which may, can make it kind of difficult to deal with. And last but not least, the uh, probably the best card in the entire deck, Lothing Jasper Splint. Lothing Jasper Flint, what do what, what I call it? which is a big lizard, it's a 4-3-4-3, which is like pretty good stats, but more importantly, it has an effect where it will just exile cards from the top of your opponent's library and allow you 
to play them regardless of their color. The reason why this deck can, can change game plans and pivot to a more mid-rangey type of game plan is because of this card very specifically that allows you to play your opponent's threats or removal or like combo pieces uh, in their stead. And I think that's pretty amazing. Here he is in card form. I have four, four copies of, of both of these guys. Uh, this is a really good deck that I have taken to locals and uh, won with and I like the finals matches were against uh, Ragdos Lizards, which uh, really fun, nerve-wracking game though. As far as the mana base is concerned, it's it's pretty simple. Uh, you know, we're playing swamps for black mana, and we're playing mountains for red mana. We're playing rock face village because sometimes it can give haste to one of our creatures, and mudflat village because uh, sometimes you get to recover one of your lost lizards, which are uh, pretty cool. We're also playing uh, dual lands of black leaf cliffs, which enters untapped if you control less than two lands, which makes it more flexible in the early game and not as much of a problem in the late game where you don't really need more than like say four, five mana per turn. And so for a spring, which does the same thing, does a little bit of damage to you, so that's something you have to be mindful about. Eh, it's not that big a deal. And then Kevin of Souls calling Lizards uh, against the occasional control matchup where they're going to try and play counter spells to prevent you from doing stuff. And if you call Lizards, uh, you can be countered, uh, which is pretty cool. Some other cards that might be worth considering. Uh, Duress is a pretty good way to get information, potentially really interesting in control combo e matchups uh, where you're going to get uh, rid of their planeswalkers that they need to win or a game changing sorcery. Uh, not truly really as good in a really uh, huge creature centric meta, which I think this meta is. Shock is pretty good uh, removal that can also double as a semi finisher, takes care of Gare for one mana, which is basically what Cutdown does, but uh, this is also a really clean way of doing it. Unknown of Affliction, another pretty good removal that just uh, is just exiles. Long Goodbye is basically much, it's pretty much the same, except this one is also the benefits of getting around the uh, world protection that Gare has. Glistening Deluge is um, its mass removal, <laughs> basically, if you're playing against tokens decks that tend to be in green and white, which is what this takes care of. Scale of Shale is a, it's a pretty janky sort of, of protection that can also maybe uh, even the odds when you're playing against another aggro matchup, suddenly you gain four life, say, from one good attack and your opponents uh, might not be able to uh, close the, 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 the gap in terms of life from this point forward. Urobras is an absolutely insane card that keeps creating a beta that grows larger and larger every turn. Really good against control matchups where uh, they'll, your opponent will have like creature removal, but not necessarily removal for the forge. Bitter Triumph is also another bit of removal that's just, it's just a good card. I just don't like it because um, you don't really want to discard a card in, in, this, in this deck, nor do you want to pay three life in a very aggressive... Uh, meta game in general where the three life could make the difference. And Mage Bin Lizard is a lizard that also uh, burns your opponent if they're playing a lot of lots of lots of instants and, and sorceries and, and non-creature stuff, which can be good against prowess decks, can be good against uh, all the control and combo decks. It's a funny little guy. I should probably give it a try uh, someday. So that's the deck. The, the game plan is just we play a bunch of lizards and we will try to overwhelm our opponent as quickly as possible. Let's see how it goes. Ah, I was drinking, not fair. Alright, play against Flippy Nips. Excellent name. Excellent nickname. That's a pretty based hand. I got the 1, the 2 into a Deep Cavern Bat and a 3 Laughing Jasper Flame. This is insane. This is like one of the... the... This deck has so many good openers. This one is just incredibly pleasing. So... We're paying the Vine Lasher, not for the Earthspring card, just because it's going to ping our opponent for one. They are playing what seems to be a Rabbit Tribal deck. Green-White seems to play, it's going to be Rabbit, even though this is a Frog. So we're going to ping our opponent for one. We're going to attack. We're going to take it. Second main, Flame Cash Gecko. Gets me free mana to cast the deep coming back so we can take a look at our opponent's hand. So the bunch of low cards. I think this is probably the strongest of the bunch. No removal. Yeah, I'm just gonna take care of this. Now I have a flyer. I know Phineas does have reach, so I'm not even gonna be able to get a free hit with the uh, deep cavern bat. Does get bigger, but that's not an issue. 
So, I'm always doing this. The question is, do I thought Stalker Warlock or do I play Jasper Flint? And I think the answer, knowing that they don't have removal, is I play Lothing Jasper Flint. Which is going to be an issue for my opponent. I can attack with the Flamecash Gecko to sort of put some pressure. They're going to take the two. It's completely fine. Three mana, they can cast uh, one of these or maybe some of the unknown cards. But this is going to be a problem, they can't deal with it, and they can't deal with it this turn. This is going to be a big thing, but I'm not too concerned about it. I can just go full of throws it next turn. It's completely fine. Wait, why would you attack with this? I can just get the three trade. I don't care about taking five as long as I take care of the uh, Phineas. That's, so, like, that's like... Impressive that they have so many tokens and stuff, but eh, it's not that big a deal. It's honestly not that big a deal. Uh, I think I'm gonna play this. I'm gonna go for the throw to this thing. Just attack with the deep cavern bat and maybe a flame cash gecko. I'm gonna trade with one of the rabbits. I'm gonna take one, I'm gonna get one back because this has lifelink, which is also really impressive. Another Volumite Caller, a season one guard, so two unknowns. Mm. What I exile of the Laughing Jasper Plains? I exiled only one creature last time. Two lands, okay. Well, they emptied their entire hand, huh? Okay. Oh, that's really good for me! The Sanguine Evangelist is just going to keep creating, well not keep creating, it's going to create like two flight bodies that I can use, as I will. Um, I don't have cards in hand, there's no point in playing the Thought Stalker Warlocks. I guess these lose some value in um, aggressive matchups, right? It's basically a top deck wants for my opponent, and I, I'm going to keep getting... More and more cards that I'm... Oh my god, that was one of the best top decks you could have gotten. Oh, might be an issue. It might be an issue. Although, I have a couple of, like, chump blockers that I can use. Oh, they're going all in. Uh, okay. Uh, I don't think I'm going to lose the Laughing Jasper Flame just now. I think I'm going to block one. Kill one of the thingies. And this is gonna take, so I take... I still take a lot if I do this. I still take a lot if I do this. Huh? Um, take 3... Take 11... I think that's fine. I think that's fine. That's a pretty impressive board. But not impossible to deal with, especially considering I drew a big fella of my own. I can offspring cast this and offspring this. Which means I'll get a token. Yeah, that's really good. Oh my god, that is so good. This Jasper Flint has done so much work for me. I'm not sure if I even attack with the Deep Cavern Bats. No, because I'm not going to use it to block anyway. But this is fine. Oh, these are just champ blockers, basically, and I have to open my opponent with the draw. Uh, okay, dude. Okay, dude. I keep forgetting that it gets to scry, too. That's kind of annoying. Alright, so this trades with this, obviously. Uh, this is gonna take a hit, and all these are just chum blockers. Um, and I can't afford to take hit, so I'm going to have to sacrifice the Vine Lashes to... Westcaller. That's really bad for me. Not really in a good spot. I've been out aggroed, and this Valley Might Caller is not gonna be enough, so... I think this is an L, actually. Wow! Bunch of rabbits uh, to care of the lizards. Alright, this one... This one will go better for sure. There's there's no way this one... Um, it's against Tyrion Lannister, actually. Um, 
That's also a pretty decent... Mm. Oh, my opponent is going first, though. I think this is keepable. I'm thinking Swamp, Vine Lasher, Rock Face Village. I'll see based on what my opponent does. Planes, alright. So it's Swamp, Vine Lasher, Rock Face Village. Uh, Fireglass Mentor. I have to make sure to cast the Fireglass Mentor in my second main. So that it, um, doesn't exile cards that I'm not going to be able to play. So. Attack with this. Or maybe I cast a Deep Cavern Bat, see what they're up to. Now I'm going to put a, a Fireglass Mentor. Worst case scenario, it gets removed and it hits like a, a get lost or something. Uh, it still should be fine. Blue, white. Okay, then. Alrighty. That's not really what I wanted to see. I'm gonna try and see what I got with the Fire Glass Mental first. Maybe I should not play the land just yet. Oh, they're gonna take care of it. Okay. I'm okay with that. Can cast an Iron Claw, and Deep Cavern Bat is gonna check their little hand. So they do have a Get Lost. No matter what I exile here, they're gonna cast it. They can't cast the Lightning Elix or the Abrade. Um, so the Get Lost is probably the best thing to pick here. Cause like they will need to access Red Mana, which. They did not! Oh! That's a bad turn for you! Alright. I bet they can negate this, right? Oh, no! They only have one blue! Oh, their red is so bad! Oh, no! <laughs> uh, this is a pee pee poo poo hand that you have, sir. Or maybe there's something in cast? Yep, three steps ahead, they're gonna cast it for blue and two just to cycle and a braid out. They did get the Spiral of Canal, but it intercepted. Chances are, oh my god, I exiled three lands. <laughs> uh, alrighty. Could they have something here? I think it's... Probably worth just playing a bunch of Iod Claw so I can deal a, a bunch of damage. Keep the Fire Glass Mental for when I'm going to be more in, in trouble. Right, maybe this is lethal even, I haven't done the math. Because each of these deals one, but that's three, four, five, six. Oh, it's really close. Oh, it's really close. Ah. Oh. At this point forward, uh, I mean, th there's a chance that they can Sunfall here, which would be bad. But still doesn't take care of the the the, the plight. I can still just I can't mud flood village because I don't have enough mana. Yep, it is the Sunfall though. I knew that. I knew this was coming. Um, okay. It's not that bad though, because um. I can cast one fire glass mint. No, I'm an I'm an idiot. No, I oh, no, I'm not gonna have red. Ah, damn it! Okay, think. I can. No, I don't have enough mana. I would need one more land to do something. I don't have stuff in my graveyard anyway. Uh, so maybe this fire glass mental as bait. They can lightning elix to gain three, which I think would be reasonable to do here. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna make commit a crime, put a loot counter. Okay, that's mana. And the cut downs are not gonna do much in that scenario. Uh, which sucks. I think I might actually lose this one also. <laughs> I'm just gonna run off resources. Cut downs have not been really. Kunzan are not doing anything in this, in this specific matchup. But we'll see. And another brain, huh? Okay. Well, that's starting to get a bit problematic. 
And they get a big 6-6. Six, six. That's also an artifact, so I can't uh, remove it. Oh, that's when I get this, huh? Oh, I would have been lethal a couple of turns ago. Uh, sh sure. I'm fine with that. Never get lost, so they can take care of whatever I draw. No, that's not what I need to do. That's not what I need to do. Uh, I wanted to do that. Get back one of these five last mentals. Although I don't think I can win this game. Oh yeah, I definitely can't win this game now. Or maybe I can. Maybe I can. They have to get lost, so but there's no point in this. Like, even if I give it haste, which I am obviously going to do, they just can't get lost, they take care of it. Yeah. Lightning Elex, yes, definitely. Definitely not winnable. Oh, that was painful. That was painful. Just one off. One off of lethal. That was fun, though. Just the one game. Just the one game. Please. Please. I've been winning... All of my games with this deck, while not recording, why can't I win one? Oh, that's a hand. That's cute. That's a lot of lands, but I don't care. That's gonna be fine. That's just gonna be swell. That's just gonna be okay. That's going to be exactly, completely fine. I don't have to worry whatsoever. I don't have to worry at all. It's completely cooler. They're not gonna have removal for this. It's Boros. Convoke. That's cool, 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 My threats start off bigger than theirs. It's completely fine. It is completely fine. I have a cut down, I have a bunch of mana, I just need to not draw more mana and I should be okay. Reserved reinforcements, okay, okay. Alright, alright, that's, that's a good draw. That's a good draw. That's a really good draw. Let's see what you're up to. Uh, no, I don't want you to have this. It's not good for me. I'm gonna try and pretend like I'm an idiot. I'm gonna be able to cut down one of the brokers if they do choose to block. Which they're probably incentivized to do. But my timing was poor, so I probably betrayed that I had a cut down in hand. Sure, it's taking them a while to think about it. Why are you playing Cavern of Souls in um in this deck? I'm not sure what you're calling for your Cavern of Souls here. Humans, maybe? Oh, yeah, I guess you are calling human. Nervous Inspector. Okay. Are you cracking it now? Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Uh, oh, that is so good. That is so good. This is so great. I don't even have to make a stupid attack. I can just play this sort of stuff. And this is shit. But we'll make do with it. This is Garber. This is the worst thing it could have been. Uh, I guess I have to cut down something before my end phase. I'm cutting down the uh... Novice Inspector. Well, it's fine. It's fine, it's fine. They got the wall leader's call anyway. God damn it. It's cool here. It's cool here. It's fine. It's fine, I'm still in good spots. I'm still oh I'm still in excellent spots. I'm still in the really good spot. Holy shit. I can just ping them for one every turn, they don't have any flyers. And they refuse to cast the one thing that's gonna give them flyers. Are you kidding me there? Can I stop getting lands, please? See your game. Flame Cash Gecko. Deals one to them. It's gonna enter the 3-3. Three, three. Get me this. Gonna cycle this mountain. Oh! I can only cast one! 
I think I boost the Iron Claw. And then I cut down the uh, Resolute Reinforcements. That should be okay. Alright, I have taken the lead, but that doesn't guarantee a victory. Especially considering they're going to be able to deal a bunch of damage just yet. They have a 2-2 flyer that's going to stop me from uh, pinging a 1-1 like, one, one flyer, which is an issue, except it's not, because I can just do that. I can pretty much just do this every turn. I don't want to trade aggressively with Flame Cash Gecko, lest they... Oh shit, that's even better than what I thought. Lest they, um... Uh, sacrifice the Sanguine Evangelist and get another flyer, but this, this is really good. I don't think this deck plays a lot of removal, so they probably don't have a way to deal with the uh, Laughing Jasper plan that's gonna exile a bunch of stuff from their deck. Oh! <laughs> oh my god! Oh god! That's just a bunch of good cards. I should have played this first, actually. I should have played this first. <laughs> uh, not everything else is going to end up with a bonus. Thanks for the gleeful demolition targeting your own artifact so I get a bunch of little shits. Uh, or I don't. Maybe I don't, because I don't know how this works. But still... I guess I'm uh, putting this, you, and you. Do I want a flame cash gag up for next turn? Nah, probably not. Probably not. Alright, time to ping for one. I completely forgot about a flying glass mantle. It's fine though. I'm gonna take the mountain. Because I haven't played a land this turn. And slowly but surely, I'm going to be winning this game. Boost the Art Claw, and passing. This is activated only as a sorcery, so I can just do this whenever. They top deck, they land. They have this little shit. I was going to deal one. It's completely fine. They have the Razor of Reinforcements. They don't have enough mana to cast the Modane's Recruiter, which I still need to be mindful of, because it can still be a problem. Never mind, they do. Oh, fuck. All right, I'm gonna have to do map, I guess. Um, hmm. There's still a chance that I lose here if I'm not careful. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to block both of these. Block this and this. Wow, that was almost lethal. It was like four off of being lethal. Three blockers and everything. So I think I survived this. Holy shit! That was close. Oh, I finally got the win! Thank you, Lord! Thank you, Jesus! I earned this victory. Holy shit. Well, after 40 minutes of recording, Jesus, it was bound to happen. I finally... One a game of Magic the Gathering with a deck I've been saying is really good and based and epic. Uh, this this is Lizards. This is what Lizards do. Hope you enjoyed this little sneak peek at what Lizards can do. And this extended look at what uh, Lizards can't do. Uh, there's probably ways I could improve this deck. Probably in the mana based department. Or maybe I'm just a bad player. Maybe I'm just bad at the game and I'm being punished for being bad. Hmm, who's to say? Alright, thank you all for your patience. I'm finally gonna reveal how to enter my super cool giveaway that I'm finally doing. Alright, so here, here are the rules to enter the super cool giveaway for 20 euros, uh, which is going to be sent to you as a, as a gift card. It could be a Steam gift card or a, a Google Play gift card or an Apple Store gift card. You get to decide if you win and I'll contact you uh, by the by the comments. So what you're gonna have to do 
Uh, well, if, if you're gonna have to like the video, I can check that. Uh, so that doesn't count. But if you like the video, that's kind of neat. That's very cool. I appreciate that. And then you're gonna go on the website scryfall.com. That's uh, scryfall, like written there, dot com. It's a huge Magic the Gathering card database that, that you can look for pretty much any card that exists. And you're gonna click on random card and you're gonna get random cards. And um, in my case, I got the Sunken Hollow. That's actually a pretty cool. That's actually a pretty cool card. That's actually not bad. And you're gonna you're gonna write a little comment saying, "Hey, this is the card that I got." Uh, in my case, that's gonna be Sunken Hollow. But hopefully, you don't get the same card as me because now that's gonna be that's gonna be annoying. And you're gonna you're gonna write, eh, "I think this is a cool card," or "I think this card is lame," depending on what you think of this card. Basically, just just look for a random card on Scryfall.com and then write a comment about the card that you got, and that. That that will mean that you've entered the contest, uh, which is going to end on... What day is it today? It's the 6th of September. So let's say September... Uh, September 13th. Friday 13th, that's a good idea. Uh, Friday 13th is when I'm going to pick a winner. I'm just going to pick a winner at random, and then I'm going to reply to the comments of the, the winner. That will have been picked at random, like, hey, you won! Uh, and then I'm gonna ask you for like uh, how to contact you, whether it's on Discord or uh, Twitter, or something, uh, so that I can send you your prizing. So that's that's how you enter the the giveaway. And that'll be it for today's Magic: The Gathering video. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Even if all you did was uh, skip to the end, so you could know how to enter the giveaway. That's completely fine. And I'm not gonna blame you. Thank you all once again. Take care, everyone, and I will see you all next time.